everyone and welcome to Maple Leaf ESL. My name is Andrew and thank you for joining me here today. For today's lesson, I want to take a look at slang expressions that begin with the letter U. So for this lesson, I've chosen about nine different expressions. Okay, so let's see if we can get started. So the first one here says up in the air and the definition is unknown, uncertain or undecided. Okay, all right, let's imagine somebody asks me, when is the party? And I say, I don't know. It's still up in the air, right? So that means I don't know yet. It's still undecided, right? I don't know when the party will be. Okay, or again, another example. Maybe somebody says, when are you taking your vacation? And I might say, I'm not sure yet. I need to talk to my company. It's still up in the air, right? So it's still undecided. So anytime something is unknown or undecided, you can say it is up in the air or things are up in the air, okay? All right, next one says be up to something and the definition there says to be planning or doing something, right? Okay, if I say, what are you up to tonight, right? That means, what are you doing tonight? Or what are your plans for tonight? So I might say, I'm not up to anything, right? That means I'm not doing anything tonight. So that could be my answer. I'm not up to anything. Okay, one thing to note here though, if you say, I think he's up to something, or I think she's up to something, that sounds like I think she's planning something not good, right? She's planning to do something that is bad. She's up to something. I can also say he's up to no good. That means he's planning to do something bad, right? He's up to no good, or she's up to no good, okay? All right, next one is an adjective, and it says they're unreal. And the definition is hard to believe or amazing, right? Okay, we can basically use this expression anytime we use amazing. If I go to a concert and it was an amazing concert, I could say that concert was unreal, right? Or that movie was unreal, right? Or that vacation was unreal. That's the best vacation I've ever taken. It was unreal. Right? If I visit a famous place like the Eiffel Tower, wow, the Eiffel Tower was unreal, or Mount Fuji was unreal. I could also use it about a person. If I see a beautiful woman, I can say, wow, she is unreal. And in this case, that means she's amazing or she's beautiful, right? So unreal. Okay, next one is a verb and it says use or a noun, it says user. Okay, and the definition here says, a person who uses drugs, okay? So if somebody uses drugs, I can say he uses or he is a user, okay? Both of those mean that he regularly uses drugs, okay? One thing to remember, I put over here, for example, heroin or cocaine. Okay, usually when you say somebody is a user, it means that they use harder drugs. So for example, if somebody smokes marijuana, marijuana is not a hard drug. So somebody who uses marijuana, usually you would not say he uses or he is a user for marijuana. So again, it's usually for the harder drugs like heroin or cocaine or methamphetamines, right? Those kind of drugs we say he uses or he's a user, okay? All right, next one says up for grabs. And the definition there is still available or unclaimed, okay? All right, imagine this example, okay? Imagine in my company, somebody quit, okay? Let's say the accountant quit, okay? Now the company has no accountant and they still have not hired a new accountant, okay? So we could say the accountant position is up for grabs, right? That means it is available, it is unclaimed. Okay, a second example here. Imagine I'm looking for an apartment, okay? I wanna live in a new apartment. So I check a few apartments and I think, okay, that first apartment I looked at was the best. So I'm gonna call the company and check 
if the apartment is still up for grabs, right? I want to know if the apartment is still available, right? So I want to know if the apartment is up for grabs, right? So again, anytime something is still available or it's un unclaimed, we can say that it's up for grabs, right? You could be in a store and maybe there is one more left of some product. So you can say there's still one more up for grabs, right? Okay, next one's an adjective and it says underground. And the definition is something not known by the general population, okay? Okay, usually this expression is used to describe music, right? Or singers or bands, right? So if you think of an underground singer or an underground band, that means it's a band that's not really known by most people, right? You would not hear their music on TV or on the radio, right? It would have to be something that maybe a friend introduced you to it, right? Or maybe you saw them play at a local bar or something like that. So that would be underground music, right? Music that is not known by most people. Okay, I could also use it for say, imagine there's an art show, right? Somebody's gonna have a small art show, maybe in like a wine bar or something like that. So this would be an underground art show, right? It's not a mainstream one, like at a popular art gallery or something like that, right? That would be a mainstream art gallery, right? In this case, an underground art show would be one that sort of you hear about it from your friends or you hear about it at the coffee shop, something like that, okay? All right, next one says up to speed and the definition there is informed or up to date. Okay, so if I'm up to speed, that means I'm informed about all the information. Okay, imagine I go on vacation for two weeks and then I come back to my office, so I've missed the last two weeks of business in the office, okay? So that means I am not up to speed about what has happened in the last two weeks. So I might ask a coworker, Okay, I might say, could you bring me up to speed about the last two weeks, right? Usually we use that, that verb, we say bring, right? Please bring me up to speed, right? That means please tell me all the things that I missed in the last two weeks, so bring me up to speed. So this one is used in the positive and it's also commonly used in the negative, right? Imagine my friends and I all watch a TV show, right? So every time we meet, we talk about this TV show. But I've been busy recently, so I haven't watched the TV show. So when I see my friends, I might say, can we not talk about the TV show because I'm not up to speed, right? That means I haven't seen it recently. I've missed a few episodes, so I'm not up to speed. Okay, a couple more. Next one says under wraps, and it says to be kept as a secret. Okay, anytime you wanna keep something a secret, you can say, I want to keep it under wraps, right? I'm having a party for my mom next week, but please keep it under wraps, right? Please keep it a secret, okay? Imagine, there's a big Hollywood star, and he's gonna make a movie, right? But the media, they are rather the film company, they don't want anybody to know about this movie, right? They wanna keep it a secret, for now. So they want to keep details of this movie under wraps, right? They don't want the media to know about it. Same thing, maybe a company has a new product, right? But they don't want the product to be revealed yet. They want to keep it under wraps, right? They want to keep it as a secret. Okay, and last one says umpteen or umpteenth. Okay, and you'll notice those look like numbers, right? Like 15, 16, 17. Same thing as an ordinal number, right? 15th, 16th, right? And it says they're umpteenth. So the definition is many, countless, or has happened many times. Okay, normally with this expression, it's usually used to talk about negative things, right? Okay, imagine I told my friend something many times, but he never listens. So I might say, I've told you this umpteen times, right? I've told you many times. 
So that's kind of a negative thing, right? Because I've had to tell him so many times, right? Okay, think about a mother talking to her child. The mother says, please clean your room, but then the child doesn't clean your room. And then the mother says again, go clean your room, but the child doesn't clean his room. So now the mother might say, for the umpteenth time, go clean your room, right? So that's a common phrase to say, for the umpteenth time, and then you say what you wanna say, right? It's something that you've said many times before. For the umpteenth time, I changed my phone number, right? Call my new phone number, not the old phone number. I've told you many times, right? I've told you umpteen times, okay? All right, I wanna erase the whiteboard and let's see if we can take a look at some written examples using each of these slang expressions. Okay, so let's take a look at these examples here. So the first one says, I still don't know if I got the promotion. Everything is up in the air, right? So everything is undecided or uncertain. Okay, next one. What did you get up to last night? So again, that's just what did you do last night, right? So that's pretty simple. Okay, another one with up to. I'm not sure, but I think Mike is up to no good, right? So that means Mike He's doing something or he's planning something that is bad, right? Okay, next thing. Did you see those fireworks? They were unreal, right? So they were amazing. Okay, next one. Look at that guy's eyes. He definitely uses, right? So he definitely does drugs, okay? And I can also say he is definitely a user, right? So that's okay too. Okay, next one. You should come to my yoga class there's still one spot up for grabs, right? So there's still one space available in the yoga class, right? But only one, as it says there, there's still one spot up for grabs, right? Okay, next one. I don't usually listen to the radio. I prefer underground music, right? So I kind of prefer sort of not popular music, right? Not the big hits pop music, right? I like underground music, okay? Next one, let's keep our plan under wraps until we know more, right? So let's keep our plan a secret until we know more. Okay, a couple more. For the umpteenth time, please stop coming late to class, okay? And I've definitely said this to a few students, right? So just remember that phrase, for the umpteenth time, right? So just remember that means I've said this a million times, but... Okay, and last one. Could you bring me up to speed on everything I missed, right? So could you update me or could you inform me on everything I missed, okay? All right, that is the end of today's lesson. Thank you so much for joining me here at Maple Leaf ESL and I look forward to seeing you again next time.